So in this video, we'll see one more example for your natural deduction in predicate logic. So here, uh, the given premises are for all x, q of x implies r of x. So this is one premise and there exists an x, p of x and q of x. So with that, we are going to derive to there exists of x, p of x and r of x. Okay, so here, what we want to do now, like uh, for breaking this for all x, it is easy. So for all x means like we can make a substitution and we can directly uh, rewrite the formula in a single term. But when you want to break this there exists of x, it is not that easy, easy. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to consider a term and we have to assume the formula by making a substitution of x naught instead of x, a term instead of this x. So I'm just going to rewrite, I'm just going to consider x naught as a term. And I'm going to rewrite this formula in terms of x naught. That is P of x naught and Q of x naught. And this is this. I'm going to take it as an assumption. And what we have to derive, we have to derive to uh, we have to derive to a term. And if the term actually matches, then we can say that the entire uh, term is valid. Okay. So now uh, fourth step is now we have P of x naught and Q of x naught as the uh, valid term. By using AND elimination of 3, I can write it as P of X naught or I can write it as Q of X naught and elimination of 3. And what is needed? I want to merge P of X 3 or P of X and R of X. Okay, and R of X is actually binded by an implication and that in term it is binded by a that X, uh, sorry, for all. So first we have to break this for all of X. Okay, so first I'm going to rewrite this formula by breaking for all x. How can we break for all x? By using for all x elimination, I can insert a term instead of x in the formula. So if the formula is valid for all x, then surely it is valid for x naught too. So I can rewrite it as Q of x naught implies R of x naught. Okay, so this is your... Uh, for all elimination of uh, x in one. And the uh, seventh step is, now you have q of x naught, q of x naught implies r of x naught. Using implies elimination of step five and six, I can rewrite it as r of x naught. Okay, so now eighth step is, now we have p of x naught and r of x naught. So both the terms are valid. We can write it as P of X naught and R of X naught also valid using and insertion between step four and seven. Okay, so this is what is needed, right? P of X and R of X, but the term should be in terms of your X, not in terms of your X naught, it is not allowed. So what we have to do, we can, uh, we can write it as using your, for all X insertion, this term is valid. So we can directly write it as for all x, one term is valid, then you can write it as P of x and R of x is valid for some x. Okay, so the last step is, it is almost done. Now, uh, the last step I need to, like from, we started from a, a prediction, sorry, we started from a prediction. An assumption we have taken and we have derived it to this till nine. So we can say that using your there exist of x elimination of uh, step two, and we started an assumption from step two to nine. Sorry, three to nine. We are deriving to there exist of x p of x and r of x as a valid term. So this is how we have to finish it off. Okay, we should not stop it over here. We have to derive a term in terms of x. Then you can re-substitute this formula. Okay, so this is the final conclusion that is needed. Thank you.